Hello everyone, my name is Rob, welcome to Kinetic Rugby League and welcome to the NRL Review Round 6. In this video I'll be showing you shortened highlights from the 6th round of the NRL, as well as talking about some of the key stats. So, let's get started. So we're ready to roll, it's big time footy. Grab the spare stash of Easter eggs, because we all know you've got one. And settle in for the footy here on Thursday night. Powers towards the line, 5 metres out, here's Brandon Smith. Ball goes to Walker, there's his trademark pass, and here's another try for Jackson Polor. Here's Harry Grant, here's Christian Welsh. One-handed offload, that was well done. Grant went around the back, and now the arrow and quick hands on, and Xavier Coates, yes! That's a lovely bit of play by Melbourne, great passing. What a talent. Oh, that nearly slid over the back, doesn't matter. How about that? Victor's made contact. Go. Considerably late. Okay, there's no attempt to tackle. You're in the bin for 10. Oh. Munster chips it up. Swaliti. Oh, well taken. Nick Meany got up above Swaliti and made the score the try. Munster goes behind Olam to Meany. Meany into the clear. And Munster on the back up, he started it and he finishes it. Harry Grant thought about kicking and then he passes inside out. Munster sends it up in the air to scrap for the ball. Coates has got it. Coates gets another try. Oh, that is extraordinary defence. He was destined to score for sure. Now Meany, now Ollum rolls it on the boot. Ollum's been taken out, it won't matter. It's a hat trick to Xavier Coates. Oh, he's easy to flush. Danica, Melbourne 28, Roosters 8. So starting with the Sydney Roosters, their spine included Joey Manu, Luke Keary, Sam Walker and Brandon Smith. Their only try came from Jackson Paulo. Their goals came from Sam Walker who had two. In terms of percentage stats, their possession was at 41%. They had a completion rate of 61%. Tackle efficiency of 89.52%, um, and their top performing players, Egan Butcher, had 49 tackles. Joey Marnie had 200 metres, Jackson Paulo had one line break, and Egan Butcher was awarded 53 fancy points. Onto the side of Melbourne Storm, their spine included Nick Meany, Cameron Munster, Jerome Hughes, and Harry Grant. Their try scorers were Xavier Coates with three, Nick Meany with one, and Cameron Munster with one as well. And goal scorers were Nick Meany with three, and Cameron Munster. Uh, percentage stats possession was at 59%, they had a completion rate of 86% and a tackle efficiency of 92.6%. And the top performing players, Harry Grant had 35 tackles, Cameron Munster had 209 metres, Nick Meany had one line break and Cameron Munster was also awarded 100 fancy points. So a quick discussion about these two teams so far, I would say this was quite evenly matched for me going into it. You know, when you look at Storm's spine, when you've got Munster and Hughes in there, you'd expect them to have kind of an edge. You know, as experienced that Kiri and Walker are, for me, Munster and Hughes edge it on their uh, quality alone. But both of these teams are fairly similar to me in that they are some of the best, like arguably top four on their best day. But they do have like an air of vulnerability about them, which we saw last season a lot with Storm mainly due to a lot of injuries that they had to deal with, but even at full strength, even with Pappenhausen coming in for a couple of those games, maybe wasn't at full fitness, but even at full strength, they did look vulnerable. Um, and the Roosters this season, there's something about them, like they can switch it on. Both of these teams can switch it on, but as I said, there is an air of vulnerability about both of them. But I do like the kind of creativity that we're seeing from Luke Carey. He is, you know, a leader as ever in the halves. Sam Walker, year after year, he's extremely young, but year after year, he's getting better and better. I like the addition of Brandon Smith. Um, you know, there's there's an edge to him. We all know what he's like with his personality, and I think he's I think he's good for any locker room. But I like the fact that you know the Roosters have have gone in for such a you know a high value player there. Joey Manu starting at fullback. Um, in place of James Tedesco, um, did a pretty decent job, and I like the signing of Jackson Jackson Paulo so far this season. He's got himself a couple of tries on the board, but yeah, both teams so far this season done a pretty good job. Look creative, can open teams up, but 
there is some vulnerability with them. Um, sometimes the attacking plays aren't as smooth, but defensively is probably the biggest issue is that they uh, they have their moments in, in lapses of concentration. But um, I would back both of them to at least push for top four. I've got more confidence, I think, in Storm to make the top four, but I think both of them can definitely fight for it. Canterbury to kick off and South Sydney up against them and good Friday footy is away a double header here on nine coming up for you today see now the temperature today is pretty good 24 degrees the humidity is at 57 percent here's a start gal just stay with us down the sideline the Bulldogs are away and Avarillo is going to go pretty much the length of the field after Kira has started it how about that their first touch of the ball off a scrum at different positions Nice kick, kick from a kick by Marnie. 40 20. He's very adept at this. Oh, he's got it. He put a foot on the touchline, Tane Milne. Sutton in the headgear. And now Burton. He kicks for Josh Adokar. It wasn't deep enough. It's, oh, no. Josh Adokar's got caught up in the turf and twisted his knee. A player down in the defensive line, and that's where he would have been. Ilias over the top. And the ball rolls to the in goal. Cook's after it. Flanagan waited. He gets a hand Cook there. Thinks, Cook's got a hand okay. on it. Does it touch the line or has we he grounded it? No try. And he muscles probably the biggest man on the park. Try the Oh, no. Thompson had the line available. And Alamotti has got him in a tackle and knocked 20. the ball out. And around the legs, doesn't he? And they hit the ground with a thud. Good pass. Thompson down the sideline. Alamotti tried to make the tackle, the trail's backing up and he celebrates his 150th with a try. Kalal Matangi gets it away to Graham, they've caught them short again. Marnie across in cover, Graham with the pass, a juggle by Walker and a recollect and the trail's going to go back to that. Beautiful ball by Cook, a long pass to Murray and then Walker and Jacob Host punches through. And South's Happy. asserting their authority. Flanagan to Marnie. Kicks through. Burton's doing the chasing. Burton's gets there. Well, normally it's Burton to Addo Carr. Jacob Preston to hip drop back here. He's on report and in the bin. It's oh, going to be a penalty back a hip here. Drop. And here goes Tane Mill. He wanted to run. And they get the ball back to Walker. Cody Walker goes over and scores the try for South Sydney. He's got four tries in his last three games now. Cook now with plenty of room to move. Great pass on from Murray. What a ball that was. Cartwright gives it away. Latrell's going to get three. And uh, Cook sends it right through the hands of Murray and Ilias. And here's another one. Campbell Graham. They're lining up for tries now. 12. Cook. Oh, intercepts. Burton. We know he's quick. I don't know if he's got the pace, is he? They're coming He's from everywhere. Him. Burton's got him covered. And Burton bursts away. Mitchell gives the pass. And Campbell Graham again. Tom. Tom. The tester Tom. for Perham has got to run towards the ball. He lets it bounce. Latrell. Latrell's got it back. He beat one. He beat another. He threw it over the top with one hand. And there's the 50 and a third for Campbell Graham. Souths. They've made somewhat of a statement here. 50 points to 16, the full-time score. Latrell Mitchell, 26 of those points himself. Starting with the Canterbury Bulldogs, their spine included Hayes Perham, Matt Burton, Cal Flanagan and Reid Marnie. Their tries came from Jake Avarillo and Matt Burton with two. And their goal scorer uh, was Matt Burton with two as well. Percentage stats possession was at 43%. Completion rate of 71% and a tackle efficiency of 91.04%. Top, uh, top performance from the game, Reid Marnie had 50 tackles. Jake Avarillo had 143 metres. He also had one line break, and Reid Marnie was awarded 65 fancy points. But moving on to the Rabbitohs, their spine included Latrell Mitchell, Cody Walker, Lachlan Ilias, and Damian Cook. Try scorers were Cameron Murray, Latrell Mitchell with three, Jacob Host, Cody Walker, and Campbell Graham with three as well. And Latrell Mitchell scored seven goals. Percentage stats possession was at 57%. And a completion rate of 74% and a tackle efficiency of 90.55%. And top performing players, Damian Cook had 31 tackles. Latrell Mitchell had 191 metres. Campbell Graham, three line breaks. And Latrell Mitchell was awarded 82 fancy points. So starting with a quick comment on the Bulldogs. 
I like the improvements that they've made uh, this season in terms of performance, not necessarily in terms of additions to the squad. Of course, they've brought in, you know, uh, Viliami Kikau, who's a huge addition. But in terms of how they're actually playing, and that'll be down to the coaching staff, of course, um, and the changes there, the Bulldogs are looking a lot better. Stronger in defence, stronger in attack. It's not a huge step above last season, but there's definitely signs that they're able to open up teams more. I do see a big step from Kyle Flanagan. We haven't really seen much in the game management or creativity department the last few years, but he's getting himself involved. He is creating things. He's been uh, part of the, uh, you know, part of the end product for the Bulldogs. But Matt Burton, as ever, is capable of running a game and uh, creating things with the way he runs at the line. And a huge addition is Reed Marnie into that spine. You know, Jeremy Marshall King is doing his thing at the Dolphins right now, and well done to him. But it feels like there's just a, you know, it's a, a touch of class slightly higher from Reed Marnie at this point. A um, couple of 40-20s in there to give them good field position. I think he's number one for that so far uh, in the league. And I think players like Jake Avrillo, I mean, we saw the pace that he had for that opening try was ridiculous. So, for me, it's still not great in the grand scheme of things for the Bulldogs, but definitely positive if you look at both sides of the ball. It's definitely better than it was last season, which is, you know, the first step to pushing for a, a premiership even though they are far off it but you've got to start somewhere with improvements and they are definitely doing that um but moving on to the rabbitos i'm going to make some comments on the rabbitos that people will either recognize or just completely disagree with and say that i'm an idiot but i'm going to say it anyway i do not understand the rabbitos i do not get them they make no sense to me and the reason why i say that is because when i look at them they, they don't give me any confidence. And I know that makes no sense because they just put, what, 50-odd points past the Bulldogs? And they've scored quite a few points this season. I know that makes no sense. Let me try and justify it in some way. It feels like they have really great moments or really bad moments. It's never like an okay game where they can just get through it. It's either a really... like. Not even a great game or a bad game. It's a half's worth of each, if that makes sense. So they'll get some good field position and have a shocking attempt at the line, and it's just god-awful. Or they'll look amazing and spread the ball brilliantly, and someone like Latrell Mitchell's going to you know, play a beautiful pass over the top to um, you know, Graham or somebody like that. For me, it's just the, the class that they've got doesn't show frequently as frequently as I feel it should so a couple things first of all Latrell Mitchell from time to time will look lazy will give off the impression of laziness when he's returning the ball but that's the only time every other time when he's you know the team is moving up the field he looks class Cody Walker for me can be creative but a couple times when he's playing down the left hand side and he tries like the quick power play and like offloads it quickly it doesn't pay off and that's not always on him there are times where he does skip through the line and he tries to offload it and nobody's there that is something I've noticed a lot with him Lock and Ilya sometimes I'll see tries to force a pass when it's not really on and that's you know due to experience and Damian Cook is I think Damian Cook's quite underrated, if I'm honest. But there's one thing that scares me about him is I think he's going to pass the ball forward every single time. There's a lot of passes from dummy half that are forward that don't get called. Um, I think there is a lot more leniency in the NRL than there is in Super League on forward passes, I'd say. Um, but that might also be an indication of the lack of quality of English refs. But he always gives off the impression that every pass is about to be forward. But, at their best, they're all incredibly talented players that can open up any team. And then you've got individuals like Johnston or Campbell Graham, Burgess, that can really sort of, you know, give you that extra sort of edge through the middle and out wide. But, there are too many times they try and spread the ball, they are flat. Incredibly flat, and there's a pass that just goes behind everyone, and it's 
you know, a possibility for the defending team to run on and retrieve the ball. So I hope hopefully that gives you some clarity as to why uh, they confuse me because we know that they can be brilliant you know those four players i mentioned in the spine can be top class but as a team they're just so flat sometimes and it just it pains me because i know what they're capable of i think they are a solid top four team but sometimes they just make dumb decisions so Hopefully that sort of justifies my point, but let's move on to the next game. Cowboys won the toss, selected to kick off first in the latest edition of the Queensland Derby and brought back by the captain tonight for the Dolphins. Great attacking opportunity, four out there on the right-hand side. They'll go that way for Katoa. The hammer finds the unmanned to Sarko. Katoa. Sarko looking to climb up, he went oh. somehow over the top of Elliot. They are targeting him, and Jermaine Sarko has a double. Oh, Tamalola for Townsend. Drinkwater right hand side, and Feltz has his first try of the season, the veteran, and they're right back in it now, the Cowboys. And he managed to get out of there. SASA was holding on to him. Nick Arena. Kenny Bromwich has done some nice things, nice things in attack. Going to offload to Nicarima. The hammer at speed. Busts some tackles. Remember me. The hammer's back in Townsville with a special individual try. It's, it's late in the hands of the receiver when contact's made. There's whiplash on report in the bin. Made eventually by Lemuelu. Quick hands, Katoa. Oh, knocked down by Elliott. No, no, tackle count restarts. Asako, though, will score a hat trick. Marshall Kim. Flat ball. Tom Gilbert. Another former Cowboy scores at that end in the first half. Fins up, baby. They are dominating. Adam G right now. Graham Atkins at the controls there. Hand between the legs. Head hits the ground first on report in the bin. Townsend. Drink water, floats it over the top. Felt had to search for it, but he'll still find the try line. Very important four pointer for the Cowboys. Granville for Dearden. Lovely delay on the pass, and Cohen Hess will roll over. Here come the Cowboys. Too easy that one. Townsend. Dearden. Cut out of drink water. Holmes squeezes his way through and gets there. Katoa, a little fumble, uh, uh, uh. keeps it alive somehow. He doesn't kick too often, it showed Lemuelu. Might just work out, a bit of a tester for Holmes. Coughed it up, towed ahead by Donahue, and then the hammer who was held back. And what about that, a big scramble. And they'll get the penalty and 10 in the bin coming up. Oh. Leading point scorer in the NRL this season, Jermaine Asako adds the two. He's lifted him. Here they go. Tabuai Fino to seal it. The Dolphins come to Townsville. Fins up, baby. They're taking the points home. The Dolphins, big winners in Townsville. A new rivalry born here tonight. So starting with the North Queensland Cowboys, their spine included Scott Drinkwater, Tom Deard and Chad Townsend and Reese Robson. Uh, Try scorers were Carl Felt with two, Cohen Hess and Valentine Holmes. Goal scorer was Valentine Holmes with three. Percentage stats, possession was at 50%. A completion rate of only 67% and a tackle efficiency of only 83.58%. Top performing players, Reese Robson had 39 tackles, Valentine Holmes 155 metres, Carl Felt with two line breaks and Valentine Holmes with 53 fancy points. Onto the side of the Dolphins, their spine included Hamiso Tabuai Fidal, Cody Nikarima, Isaiah Katoa and Jeremy Marshall King. The try scorers were Jermaine Asako with three, Hamiso Tabuai Fidal with two and Tom Gilbert with one. And Jermaine Osako had the goals with four. Percentage stats possession was at 50%. They had a completion rate of 80%. And a tackle efficiency of 87.31%. And looking at the top performing players. Jeremy Marshall King had 41 tackles. Jermaine Osako 161 metres. He also had three line breaks. And Jeremy Marshall King was awarded 66 fancy points. So starting with the Cowboys. They missed Scott Drinkwater for a couple of weeks and they had Tom Chester, I believe that's his name, Tom Chester filling in at fullback who was a little bit ropey, but 
you know, when you go from Scott Drinkwater to somebody that's not been getting regular minutes, it's understandable uh, in comparison. But I thought that with the chaos in the Dolphins' spine going into this, so Nikarima playing at number six, Milford not even being in there, uh, Katoa, um, I think he missed a couple of weeks, so obviously not having Sean O'Sullivan in there, and Jeremy Marshall King obviously is a staple at this point, and so is um, the Hammer, Hamiso Tabio Fidel. Um, I thought that with a full spine for the Cowboys and the full complement in the forwards and the backs, compared to a slightly messed up Dolphins team, I thought, and at home, sorry, as well for the Cowboys, that this was theirs for the taking. I, I, I don't understand it. I just don't get what's going on with the Cowboys this season. I, I've i not really done like a deep dive into them into trying to figure out what it is, whether defensively they just look a bit weak or there's a lack of creativity going forwards. If one of you has an idea, let me know. I haven't really paid much attention in detail to the Cowboys in, in that respect. Um, but yeah, there's something going on with them. There's something missing. The team is the same. And they were fantastic last season. So if anyone has any opinions on why the Cowboys don't really have that killer instinct right now, I mean, I'm sure they'll find it. Um, you know, same coach, same team. I'm sure they'll sort it out. But if anyone has any opinions, let me know. Um, but onto the Dolphins. They have been incredibly impressive this season. And as I said, the spine was messed up. You'd expect them to struggle. Missing Sean O'Sullivan, who's been fantastic for them so far, kind of running games. But somebody as experienced as Cody Nikarima is going to be able to kind of take on that role, take the pressure off Isaiah Katoa to just be creative and to just kind of, you know, to run at the line. And then Nikarima's just got the rest of it sorted. You know, go for your life, pal. Just make things happen. And then he'll just take control of the game. Um... But players like Jeremy Marshall King have been incredibly important for their sort of pace and setting the tone going forward. And Hamiso Tabio Fidel has been sensational for them so far this season. Um, not really getting much game time for the Cowboys. I mean, obviously he did get a fair bit and would fill in at fullback if needed or on the wing or maybe at centre from time to time. Um, but seeing him as the staple of that spine and getting regular minutes showing what he's capable of with his pace and his skill. I didn't realise he was as young as he is. I think he's 21. I thought he was like mid to late 20s, honestly. Even though, you know, I need to do some research, man, honestly. But um, they have been incredibly impressive with all the mix-ups. They've done a fantastic job. And players like Jermaine Asako, plenty of tries on the board this season and kicking plenty of conversions. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best in this league. They're doing a brilliant job and there is no reason why, you know, finals footy isn't on the cards for them. I would be surprised if they don't make top eight. The only way I could see them not making top eight is if teams outside of it, like the Cowboys and the Eels, start getting their act together. And then there's only a few more positions that they can fight for because there will be teams better than them long term. But if they can keep up with these teams continuously and kind of, you know, make me wrong on that claim, then maybe top fours on the cards. I don't think that's realistic to say, but it's the kind of the keeping up. So well done from the, the I mean, well done from the Dolphins, honestly. Ruben Garrick gets us underway. Awkward one to handle out wide. Tall in the headgear brings it forward. They go to the short side again. Cleary for Edwards. They opened up very meekly. That manly defence. And Dylan Edwards scores for Penrith. If he goes the full 80 again tonight, you'd be backing him in to do so. Good kick here 40, for a 40 20 from Croker. Millimetres short. What a goal. What a pass. From Stephen Crichton to Brian Toto. From the middle of the field. Yo to the line. Now there's some progress. Chance here for Edwards. Back on the inside. He's got another one. Luke to the open side. Back to Yo. He finds Cleary. There's space there once again. Cleary unloads. And Dylan Edwards has a first half hat trick. It's three. 
Here's a short ball. They were back their way in through Scott Sorensen. Here is Cleary out the back. Parker looking at his man, not the ball. And it's Sevens Rugby now. Top oh, back on the inside, staying alive. Edwards looking for four. And he'll get it. Play just outside the 20. Here is Good. Jake. Jerry Evans grubbering, chasing through. Saab is there. And he plants it down. That's how they grab their first points of the game. He hasn't been off, has he? I don't think he has. No, no. Cherry Evans kicks wide. Turbo was there. It ends up falling for him. Now Luke rubbering for Cleary. He gets a bounce. Uh -huh. He scores. At full time here at Penrith, the Panthers 44, the Seagulls 12. Starting with the Manly Seagulls, their spine included Tom Trebojevic, Kale Weeks, Daly Cherry Evans and Lachlan Croker. The tries came from Jason Saab and Tom Trebojevic. Their goals came from Daly Cherry Evans with two. Percentage stats possession was at 45%, completion rate of 78% and a tackle efficiency of 84.22%. Uh, top performing players, Jake Trebojevic had 45 tackles, 119 metres and 53 fancy points. For whatever reason, line breaks was just missing. I have no idea why, but it was. Looking at the Panthers, their spine included Dylan Edwards, Jerome Luai, Nathan Cleary and Mitch Kenny. Tries came from Dylan Edwards with four, Brian Tuttle, Scott Sorensen and Nathan Cleary. And their goals came from Nathan Cleary with eight. Percentage stats possession was at 55%, a completion rate of 84% and a tackle efficiency of 91.25%. Top stats uh, from the night, Zach Hoskins had 31 tackles, Brian Tuttle 246 metres and Nathan Cleary 100 fantasy points. So let's start with the Sea Eagles. They have put up some really good numbers so far this season. They've looked really creative in attack. But the thing is, when you come up against a team like the Panthers, who somehow find a way to shut down even the best of teams, it's, it's going to be difficult to, to open things up. They've had some mix-ups in the spine as well. They've had Kale Weeks playing at six, and Josh Schuster, and Cooper Johns. So they're going to need some stability somewhere. Whether there's just injuries, I don't know exactly. Or whether they're just trying to try things out, I don't know. One thing that will be important for them for this season is keeping Tom Trebojevic healthy. That is incredibly important. I feel like... This isn't to say that they're on the same level, but I feel like if you lose Cherry Evans to an injury, for example, that Josh Schuster has it in him to kind of control the game. Like he, I get the impression that he's smart enough to control the game if if need be, and then either Weeks or Johns can just try and be creative and pop up where it's where needed. But to lose Tom Trebojevic again would be hugely detrimental to their season. If they want any chance of a premiership, they ideally need to find out who's playing at six and keeping them healthy. But with Trebojevic and then Cherry Evans staying healthy all season. I do trust them on any given day to win a game. Having players like Jason Saab back in the squad is huge. You know, you want to grubber kick that ball through and you need someone with insane pace to beat everybody. Jason Saab is your man. Fastest in the league. So, you know, it makes sense. And he's incredibly tall as well. He's such a threat. But hopefully he can stay healthy as well. The, the Seagulls for me are insanely dangerous. I would not like to play them on their best day, but they've just got to keep people healthy. I know they have no control over that. It's just a, a kind of look of the draw thing, but hopefully a lot of these stars for the Seagulls stay healthy. Maybe they're missing Foran. I don't think they're missing him that much if they find a regular number six, but yeah, they're just shut down by the Panthers. Who... I've got an absolute star in Dylan Edwards. I feel like he's still not given... Okay, he's given the acknowledgement. Ever since last season, he's been given huge acknowledgement of what he offers. But I feel like the the level in which he's spoken about still isn't quite where he's earned. If that makes sense. Like, we're starting to acknowledge how much of a top-class player he is. And possibly being, you know, in the conversation of top five fullbacks in the league... I still wouldn't put him number one, but I feel like we're not quite giving him as much praise as he should get. 
he has been insane. Extremely reliable, extremely smart. Um, he's done a fantastic job at the Panthers. Um, maybe they are a little bit vulnerable. You know, we saw that from the World Club Challenge against St. Helens. We saw that against the Broncos in round one. You know, that I do still think that they are the the best in the NRL. I trust them to win more games over the course of the season, even though the Broncos are above them right now. It's just I never I never really get the, the impression that the Panthers are slacking off. Even if they're in like a a tight game. They never look different to me. They always look like they're in control. And sometimes teams are just putting up a, like such a good fight that they don't sort of run away with it. But the Panthers look incredible again this season. Um, four tries for Dylan Edwards is insane. But yeah, the Seagulls, hopefully they can get things together uh, in the spine. They've got plenty of top class, top class talent in that team. And uh, yeah, I'm sure the Panthers will keep on rolling and uh, keep pushing Broncos for the rest of the season. And here we go. We're off and running. Uh, it's Josh Papaliti, his third game back from a calf injury. Fogarty paused with ball. Oh, it opens up. Chris gets it on. It's a try. It's sorted up and up. And the Raiders off to a flyer. Raiders have only missed one tackle. Wonderful statistic early as Mam on to Walsh. Then the bullet pass. Cobbo's going to pin the ears back in. Oh, it's close. Wingers can finish these these days. This guy here is one of the best and still has his best football ahead of him, which is scary to think. Now it comes to Rapina. Goes for it. Scores. Jordan Rapina. And Croker makes it three from three. Waits. Carrigan again, first receiver. Reynolds. Ricky coming through. Hopawani lost it to try. It's Jordan Ricky. They were one pass away. Fogarty. Hopawani. Yes. Albert Hopawani scores. The Raiders hit back. Can I get something out of this? Reynolds. Man. Cut it. Yes, it's Arthur's. Spectacular. One play left here. Reynolds, can he get a result? Wrap it up. He's lost it, but he might have been collected high. Capewell. Referee is calling it a knock on. Take it. We've had a look at it. Marty's hands are well above. Right? And his knees get him. Right? So it's going to be on report. It's going to be a penalty. Yep. They're coming off their line hard here. Walsh. Capewell. It's wayward and it's over. Oh, look at Ricky. This has been a hard-earned win. Starting with the Brisbane Broncos, their spine included Reese Walsh, Ezra Mam, Adam Reynolds and Billy Walters. Try scorers were Selwyn Cobbo, Jordan Ricky and Jesse Arthurs and their goal came from Adam Reynolds. Percentage stats, possession was 53%, completion rate of 71%, and a tackle efficiency of 85.59%. Top performing players, Jordan Ricky had 37 tackles, Payne Haas had 203 metres, Selwyn Cobbo, two line breaks, and Payne Haas, 77 fancy points. Looking at the Canberra Raiders, their spine included Sebastian Chris, Brad Schneider, Jamal Fogarty, and Zach Wolford. Try scorers were Jordan Rappiner with two, and Albert Hapuate. Goal scorers was uh, Jared Croker with four. Percentage stats possession was at 47%, completion rate of 78%, tackle efficiency of 85.25%. Top performing players, Elliot Whitehead had 41 tackles, Sebastian Chris 169 metres, Jordan Rappiner 2 line breaks and Jamal Fogarty 68 fancy points. Now, I have been waiting to talk about this game for a little while now, ever since it was played. I would like to just lay this out really quickly. Because I do not understand how, how, if you were to put money on any game on winning, yes you might go with the Panthers because it's the Panthers, but still 
the Seagulls have been, you know, scoring for fun. If there's any game that made complete sense to put everything you had on it, which, by the way, I didn't do. I didn't put everything I have on it. I'm still in a house. So, but if I was to put everything on it, it would go on the Broncos from this round. Top of the league, undefeated against the Raiders, who are struggling. No Jack Whiten. Brad Schneider starting, who's had hardly any minutes this season. So, and Tarpany was missing. So the missing Tarpany, the spine's out of whack. There's issues inside the club with Jack Whiten at the time. So it's kind of all over the place. The Broncos have their full spine. Nobody missing aside from Corey Oates. So full complement. Undefeated. At home. This is on paper. Could not be more in favour of any team to win. I am... I'm unsure what to say. I I do not know. I do not know what to say. It just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. But moving on from that, the Raiders have done well enough this season, I feel, to kind of like stay in games from time to time. Like they look like they can offer some like offer something defensively, quite stout at times, and are able to open teams up. But the most important thing for them now is obviously locking in Jack Whiten. Don't know what he wants. I mean, obviously he wants to win a premiership, but is he more money orientated than he is victory orientated? Is what I mean. But the most important thing for the Raiders is locking him down. If you have to pay him more money, I think it's understandable to do so. I personally would. Because I think you need to keep a player like him around. And maybe look at other positions in the spine to try and get some top class talent. Um, just kind of support Whiten. But the Broncos. They look incredible. And Reese Walsh has really settled in. And he's been incredible. Because I saw him for the New Zealand Warriors last season. And... You could say that he was in a system that just wasn't really clicking and just wasn't just wasn't very good. But we kind of saw some glimpses of what he could do. Like, he had a good step, bit of pace, but like he's now just absolutely flourishing in this team. It's just so good to see for him. And Ezra Mam looks settled now, looks calm and uh, confident, looks like he knows what he's doing. Adam Reynolds running things as ever. Obviously, Broncos lost this game, so it's like kind of weird talking about them in this light. There is one thing I wanted to say, just an opinion on Adam Reynolds, and people can, you know, again, disagree if they want to. I think of all players in the league, nobody equals Adam Reynolds or matches Adam Reynolds on the ability to control and dictate a game by a singular player. I don't think Mitchell Moses does it. Like he's a quality player and can do it. And the same, you know, exact same with um, Jerome Hughes or Cameron Munster, or even Nathan Cleary. But Ad there's something about Adam Reynolds controls a game and dictates a game better than anyone else in the NRL right now. So if you're going for like longevity at number seven, you go with someone like Nathan Cleary, who is a world-class player and can run a game and can, you know, help your team score for fun. But I think for one season, you need a number seven that's going to just run everything by themselves. Adam Reynolds is the guy for me. And he did miss some games due to injury last season and that definitely hampered the Broncos because for me they should have been a surefire top four competitor and it just kind of fell off for them. Um, but keeping that whole team healthy and you know shoring things up with Payne Hass's contract situation that was 
seemed a little bit detrimental to the locker room last year. Looks like it's not a big deal now. That's all kind of water under the bridge at this at this point in time. The Broncos could definitely fight for a premiership this year. But games like this, where on paper it should be a absolute set-in-stone victory, they've got to win these games. They can't allow themselves to show vulnerabilities like this. If you're going to lose a game, go down to the wire against the Panthers. If you're going to lose one, do it in that scenario. But other than that, nah, cut it out. So, let's move on to the next game. The Titans kicking off. Dragons with first use of the football. Enjoy your Easter Sunday afternoon footy. It's Frankie Milo now. Big Tino. He's not having a bar of it. They are coming up, leaving the ground. Oh, that's a big blow for the Dragons. Ben Hunt. Kicks. Campbell underneath it. Oh, look. He does that so well. One of the best in the game at doing it. And the Dragon Centre opens the scoring this afternoon. What a try, Zach Lomax. Campbell takes off out of dummy half. It's a pass away. Back to Campbell. There's Jaden under the post. And the Titans do hit back. So here's Sloan. He returns the football. He gets involved in a tackle here. Big Tino. He ragdolls him. And there's a little bit going on in back play. Oh, there's Jaden Sua. And, oh! Puts the Titans in front. Bellatel Moan to Ben Hunt. Both halves linking up with each other. He slots the penalty goal, and we're all locked up at eight all. Now for St. George of Lawara, invited to Ballon. Now Ben Hunt. Oh, he's elusive. Ben Hunt fires oh, it out no. the line. Ravalawa, he's got it, kept it in play. Now beats oh, Nardo, oh. he's not going to stop him. No one stops the Fijian Express. Leaving the dummy half, Aaron Clark, so Toby Sexton, Aaron Shop beats one, gets it to Sami, cuts back towards the centre of the ground, there's a gap for Philip Sami, accelerates to the line, reaches out and scores. Philip Sami, what an afternoon he's having. One more play here for the Dragons. It's the last. A moan. Laurie. Ben Hunt. What will he do? He goes to Jack Bird. Oh, Ben Hunt gets a great ball from Bird. Leaming the dummy half. Clark to Liu. Sexton. Toby Sexton back in the NRL. And he may have just scored the match winner for the Titans. 18 all. Tanner Boyd. Guides it through. Full time at Sepa Super Stadium. The Titans 20 have defeated the Dragons 18. Starting with the St. George Illawarra Dragons, their spine included Tyrell Sloan, Junior Amon, Ben Hunt, and Jacob Little. Try scorers were Zach Lomax, Michaeli Ravalawa, and Ben Hunt. Their goals came from Zach Lomax with three. Percentage stats possession was at 51%. Completion rate of 77% and a tackle efficiency of 82.89%. Top performing players, Jaden Sewer had 36 tackles. Michaeli Ravalawa had 171 metres. He also had two line breaks and Ben Hunt was awarded 83 fancy points. Looking at the Gold Coast Titans, their spine included Jaden Campbell, Toby Sexton, Tanner Boyd and Chris uh, Randall. Tries came from Jaden Campbell, Philip Sammy and Toby Sexton. And their goals came from Tanner Boyd with four. Percentage stats, possession was at 49%. Completion rate of 75% and a tackle efficiency of 85.01%. Top performing players, Joe Stimson had 41 tackles and then Philip Sammy had 275 metres, three line breaks and he was also awarded 78 fancy points. So, the Dragons. I have a weird feeling about the Dragons. Not, not a weird feeling. They feel weird to me is a better way of putting it. Because they've got a world-class player in Ben Hunt. And they've got a couple decent players here and there. But just something about the Dragons. It just feels like 
consistent mediocrity for the past couple of years, and also then week in, week out. They have it in them to, like, just destroy teams. Like, it's in there somewhere, and a good example of that was at home against the Rabbitohs last season, which, like, they just put points ridiculously quickly out of nowhere. Like, they've got it in them to do that, but just so inconsistent, and I don't know what they need to do over there. I was thinking that if they had the cap space, a good addition... I was going to make a video on this, but I think it's a little bit late at this point. But here's my opinion anyway. A good addition to the Dragons would be Jack Whiten. If he was looking to leave, I think you've got Jaden Sullivan, who's probably not, not going to be a standout number six. Neither is Junior Ramone. You need a next level. Try and get Jack Whiten. Pair him with Ben Hunt and go from there. Maybe you take that next step and you become a regular, uh, regular top eight uh, finisher. I think Tyrell Sloan getting some regular minutes now, showing what he's capable of. Great speed from a standing position. Great acceleration. Um, so he's going to be hugely important for them going forwards. And Ben Hunt staying healthy as well. Um a lot of people thought he should have won the Dalian medal last year. But they've got to sort some things out over there at the Dragons. They've got to do something to kind of change the culture or just give them like an edge somewhere. Go and get another big player somewhere. In the forwards or in the backs. Go and get someone. Because it just feels like consistent mediocrity. Consistency is good, but not if it's mediocre. Anyway, moving on to the Titans. Another situation where a team's spine is out of whack. I would have edged it towards the Dragons personally. Based on the fact that it's the Titans. However, there's a few stars in that Titans team now. Who are really kind of pushing them up a little bit. Jaden Campbell hasn't really played much. Especially when AJ Brimson's been fit. And he's sort of found a home in the fullback position. Kieran Foran looks like he's kind of in control of things. Nothing too crazy, but he just looks comfortable. Tanner Boyd can sort of feed off that, although he hasn't been overly impressive. And Chris Randall has had his, his good and uh, you know good and bad moments, as has basically everyone. But one player that I'm really impressed with is Alifiana Khan Pereira. From a standing start, that kid... I say kid, I don't even know how old he is. That kid... Is rapid. He's insanely skillful. He's just... He's brilliant. I, I really like him. So it feels to me now that the Titans have got some... Genuine... Like... Quality individuals. It's just about putting him to, putting you know all of it together. Another player I want to touch on. I am a Warrington Wolves fan. And we just lost... Um, Thomas McKayley. To... Uh, for compassionate grounds and he's headed back to Australia and is now playing for the Gold Coast Titans. I, I'm i going to miss him a little bit because, first of all, we're kind of running low on props at the moment, so we kind of need him back now, but that's not going to happen. He had, I think he played 18 games, I think, looking at an article, he played 18 games. He came in last season into a team that was just weak in the forward pack. Just so incredibly weak and offered nothing. He came in and from game one only got I think he only got three carries in in his first game, which was against Wakefield Trinity. The following weeks after was an absolute tank. He looked knackered, but he was a tank. He made great meters, worked his backside off all game. Looked a little bit slimmer this season, but worked really hard again. Good meters, got stuck in. Titans are very lucky to have him, and I hope they look after him. I hope to see him play regularly. I'd love that for him. Part of me was kind of hoping that, you know, maybe, you know, Warrington Wolves make playoffs, which we should, hopefully, but he'd come back for the last couple of games if we could work something out. But, um, 
yeah, look after him. I hope he goes well. Hope he gets regular minutes. But yeah, Titans are looking a lot better. Some good individuals in there. So let's see if they can keep improving. Is top eight a possibility? I guess so. If they just keep making improvements, keep chipping away, and keep being as creative as I know that they can be now. So we'll see how it goes. Nothing separates the two. Knights get us underway on a Sunday night in Newcastle. And it will be Adam Fanua Blake with the first run of the evening. Braley brings the right side. Cross leg, quick hands. Dom Young, they're on his back. He's still got there. Hastings, Crossland, intercept, intercept and Cossie away. The Warriors, there's chasers everywhere. There's seven knights chasing the hare and Corsi. Johnson ready to put up a bomb, you would think. He'll kick across the face of the goals. Chasers there, Tom Young too good. And off and running, look out, alarm bells ringing. Tom Young, now the alarms are going off. Miller in support, Miller with speed. They're chasing hard, Valia turned inside. This time it's the Warriors with a big chase. Oh, that's a super play there from Dom Young to get it going. Gagai, Hastings, long, long spread of the ball. Fitzgibbon, best, best is offloaded. Marzio with it, Greg Marzio. You wouldn't stop him with a pickaxe. Warriors attack, 10 out. Right side, Johnson with a skip and delivers. And go, oh, hang on. Adam Poppy's dive almost dived over the dead ball line. Last play, Knights, Hastings kick towards the uprights. It's there, a leap. It's anyone, it's Frizzell. Tyson Frizzell. Cross it out, course his way. Chases through, batted back by Maju. Play on, play on for best. Left foot kick, here come the chase. Here it goes, Phoenix. Crossland. What's going on? He hasn't sat down. Oh, lovely move. Poppy. What a smoke and mirror stuff from the Warriors center. Last tackle, Warriors. Ball, Johnson. Inside, Nickel Klukstar. Offloads, Poppy. Then the ball to the corner. And Corsi. Now, man, almost didn't get to the ball. It's only half cut, man. Oh, it went from disaster to success he almost missed the playing of the ball he's got on the bus late and he's gone all the way for a try someone to stand up as a hero for the Knights here Hastings fight across best Marzio you're not going to stop him here he goes Nickel Butcher right up to the line there's a try run it to the line fought in support full time Newcastle 34, the Warriors 24. Starting with the New Zealand Warriors, their spine included Chauncey Nickel Clockstad, Tamari Martin, Sean Johnson, and Wade Egan. Try scorers were Adam Pompey with two and Edward Cossey and Jackson Ford. Goal scorer was Sean Johnson with four. Percentage stats possession was at 50%, completion rate of 80%, and a tackle efficiency of 88.28%. Top performing players Josh Curran had 48, sorry, 58 tackles. Chauncey Nickel Clocks had a 245 meters. Adam Pompey had two line breaks, and he was also awarded 73 fancy points. Looking at the Newcastle Knights, their spine included Lachlan Miller, Phoenix Crosland, Jackson Hastings, and Jaden Braley. Try scorers were Dominic Young, Greg Marshy with two, Tyson Frizzell, Phoenix Crosland, and Kurt Mann. And goal scorer was Lachlan Miller with five. Percentage stats possession was at 50%, completion rate of 79% and a tackle efficiency of 91.49%. Top performing players, Jaden Braley had 42 tackles, Lachlan Miller had 193 metres, Greg Marju two line breaks, and Tyson Frizzell was awarded 74 fancy points. So, starting with the Warriors, this feels like a game that they probably should have won. They have looked better than the Knights, they have been better than the Knights, and for a team that is looking to kind of cement themselves as a top eight team this season and going forward even though the Knights have been improved which I will talk about in a second this feels like a game the Warriors should have won now 
Moving on to the Knights, there's kind of an upset potential in that team now. There are all, They are also a team that has been messed up a lot in the spine. Like, Phoenix Crosland hasn't played um, every minute in the spine. Jackson Hastings, I think, maybe has missed games. Tyson Gamble has been in and out. Kalen Ponga is missing. I think Jaden Braley's missing for the next round. It's kind of all over the place in the spine, but they're just kind of like sticking in there. And, you know, the game against the Manly Seagulls was a great example of kind of like the fight that they've got in that team. So the Knights have certainly been improved from last season. And it, again, it's like individuals kind of making plays um, and just being leaders. But it's kind of the same for the Warriors. And there was one thing I wanted to talk about, or one person I wanted to talk about was Sean Johnson. Because recently I saw a comment from him. Basically, I think it was in relation to him being criticised about not being a ball-running player anymore. I mean, you, Sean Johnson, like, you think of him like five, six, seven years ago. He starts running at the line. There's a step coming, and there's nothing you're going to do about it. And he's going to be through... And you're going to be conceding four points, mate. But he's not that kind of player anymore. And he basically allude, basically said that I don't know why people expect that of me. Because I'm not that kind of player anymore. And that's true. But I think he struggled to adapt to that. But he's kind of got it down this season. So he's getting back to, let's say, his best. But his best in a different style, in a different way. It's never felt like his passing is like something to rely on. His step is what he used to rely on, from what I gathered anyway. But obviously all halfbacks need to take pride in their ability to actually pass the ball. Um, like the looping passes over the tops of centres and wingers, for example. And he's had that in his locker, of course. But that's never been the go-to. It's never needed to be the go-to. Because he was brilliant just with his step. But now he's, it feels like he's really adjusting to that role of being a, a ball-playing halfback instead of a ball-running halfback, if that makes sense. And, you know, including Tamare Martin, who had a, I thought had a pretty good season with the Broncos last year, doing a really good job at number six. And Chancey Nicol Klockstad is a solid addition at number one. And Wade Egan's having a pretty good season at number nine. So I'm liking what the Warriors are doing. Just... Don't don't lose to teams that you shouldn't be losing to. That's that's my advice. That's my expert advice. Do that and you'll win. Um, but yeah, the Knights really liking that kind of they have been joked about a lot from last year. But I am liking that you know they're making these steps forward. They'll be missing Kalen Ponga. They have looked better without Kalen Ponga. So considering he's on somewhere. Around, I think, 1.4 mil a year, I think. Would it be a smart investment to kind of shift him on and look elsewhere to just strengthen other areas? Maybe centre positions, maybe getting yourself, I don't know, a Tom Burgess. Just a thought, just a thought, but I'm really liking what these, these teams are doing so far this season, so... It's good to see. Final game of round number six, live on Fox League. Glenn Gutherson gets us underway. And the Tigers with first use. Quick play the ball. Hodgson, Moses, quite the dab. Back in field. That's superb. That is absolutely superb from Moses and Brown and Gutherson. Big line set to the right. Moses kick again. Oh, he's dishing up the bounce. He's the Easter Bunny. Hodgson and Brown. Gutherson, not good. There's a chance for the Tigers. Better than a chance. Stafford tore away. The Tigers will get one against the run of play. Stafford is the star man. Moses again. The kick. Why not the kick? is perfect Moses is putting together a handbook they're throwing a bit at the Tigers here Brown to Moses Moses goes long Sebo for the corner he owns the corner 
Torres out. Last tackle. Brooks goes long. Moses style. Kapoa with it. Tupo gets his chance. Down the corner. No flick this time. One hander back to Kapoa. Junior Tupo. Brooks. Dewey. Line set. Bateman with it. Here come the Tigers. Bateman passed and they get over in the corner. Eight and a half to go. Corazel, show, show, wide, Brooks, then Staines, kept it going, Tupo, I'm not sure about the put down. Gutterson goes long. Yeah, they don't go short. Oh! No! Dropped by Staines over the sideline. They're about to go there right now. They're looking to break the hearts of the Tigers fans. Again, Madison kept it alive. Gutherson floats it out to Sebo. Full time, Parramatta 28, the West Tigers 22. Starting with the West Tigers, their spine included Charlie Staines, Adam Dewey, Luke Brooks, and Api Corusel. Tries came from Starford Toa, uh, Asu Kapoor, Brent Naden, and Junior Tupo. And their goals came from Adam Dewey with two and Luke Brooks. Percentage stats possession was at 57%. 76% completion, completion rate and a tackle efficiency of 90.71%. Top performing players, Api Corusau had 37 tackles, Charlie Staines 238 metres, Junior Tupo 4 line breaks and he was also awarded 65 fancy points. Looking at the Parramatta Eels, their spine included Clint Gutherson, Dylan Brown, Mitchell Moses and Josh Hodgson. Tries came from Clint Gutherson, Will Penasini, Bryce Cartwright and Mike Acevo with 2. And their goals came from Mitchell Moses with four. Percentage stats, possession was at 43%. Completion rate of 78%. And a tackle efficiency of 85%. Top performing players, Ryan Matheson had 42 tackles. He also had 191 metres. Mike Acevo had two line breaks. And Mitchell Moses was awarded 73 fancy points. So starting with the Tigers. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. It's just, it's just a bit of a mess at the minute, isn't it? I mean, it already was a mess. Already a bunch of question marks over Luke Brooks' future. Adam Dewey's going to be out for a little while now. But what do they even do at this point? Really, what do they do? I thought that they probably should have been one of the teams that looks into Jack Whiten. Because I know they want Mitchell Moses, and they could still get him. I see a world in which they get Mitchell Moses and Jack Whiten, but it means letting a lot of the the big guys with big contracts go for kind of just cheaper options but I mean Jack Whiten would be a good fallback option but they've got to they've got to do something at the Tigers there needs to be a culture change a roster change more importantly because you can have a culture change but if you you know if the player quality is lacking severely and coaching staff you need a change Something, I think there needs to be some kind of sweeping changes there. But, trust the Eels to make it a close game against the Tigers. I don't I don't get it. They've got world-class talent all throughout that team, but they just find a way to make it difficult on themselves. I don't know how. I do not know how. They're, they're a weird team, the Eels. They can... They can beat the Panthers twice in the regular season and then lose to teams like the Bulldogs when they were just god-awful. Like, when they're at their lowest. Makes no sense. But, Josh Hodgson as a replacement for Reed Marnie has looked pretty good. I'd say the you know, similar play styles. They're about the same. Players like Clint Gutherson, I remember there being some question marks over his contract and things like that and him wanting to potentially move somewhere else. One thought I had on that, maybe it'd be worth a video, I don't know, but this is kind of the opinion I had, is that let's say, for example, this isn't really about the Eels, it's more about Gutherson. I guess it relates to the Eels, so I'll just get on with it. Let's say, for example, that the Panthers like Mitch Kenny. Nathan Cleary, which they do, and Jerome Luai too much that it is non-negotiable getting rid of them. There is no way. And a world in which, say, Dylan Edwards is underappreciated, 
maybe, just maybe, if they're not willing to pay the money, which they should, but let's say that we want to give Kenny more money, uh, Clary's already going to be on a monster deal, let's be honest, and Jerome Luai, we want to give them more money or more security, we need to save money elsewhere, and the contract that we should be giving you, we cannot afford in our salary cap. Dylan Edwards, I think what he could do, because I'm pretty sure he's on less money than Gutherson, is if they did a swap, Edwards goes to Parramatta, Parramatta becomes stronger with him at fullback, and he also gets more money that he deserves. Clint Gutherson may go to the Panthers, and is willing to take a pay cut because he's now at the Panthers. And there is kind of a win-win scenario for both of them. Bit of a tangent from the point of this video, but my opinion's out there. There you go. It's, it's a hypothetical, but it's just something I see in my head. But yeah, the Tigers are an absolute mess. Adam Dewey, I feel like he's been around for a decade, but he's like, I think he's 24. Luke Brooks just isn't, it just isn't the guy at number seven. So I think they've got to do absolutely everything they can to get Mitchell Moses um, next season. Everything they can. Just throw everything at him. Um, I think 1.4 was kind of what they were looking at. Just offer 1.5 and get it over and done with. Api Coruscant sticks out like a sore thumb in this team. It's unfortunate. But players like Brent Naden at times will like kind of come out and just produce some quality with the experience that he's got. You'd expect it. Um, they've had their moments, the Tigers. They haven't looked like god-awful, I'd say. Even though that might have been how I described them before. I can't remember what my exact wording was, but... They're lacking. But there's, like, bits here and there where they look... Okay. But the Eels also look vulnerable. A little bit like Storm and... Roosters was like they should be doing better they've got top class talent throughout the roster but there's some vulnerabilities there and they just haven't really got that killer instinct instinct um, that we saw last season and probably the season before so and it's important for them to lock down Mitchell Moses as well so we'll see how these teams get on but yeah as I said trust the Eels to make it tough against the Tigers Taking a look at the NRL ladder after round 6, in 17th place West Tigers, 16th Canberra Raiders, 15th North Queens and Cowboys, 14th Parramatta Eels, 13th Canterbury Bulldogs, 12th St George Illawarra Dragons, 11th Cronulla Sharks, 10th South Sydney Rabbitohs and 9th Manly Seagulls. Starting the top 8 in 8th place Newcastle Knights, 7th Sydney Roosters, 6th Gold Coast Titans, 5th New Zealand Warriors, 4th Dolphins, 3rd, Melbourne Storm, 2nd, Penrith Panthers, and still in 1st place, Brisbane Broncos. So that's going to be it for this video. If you have any thoughts on any of the matches from Round 6 of the NRL, let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new content. You can also follow the social media accounts in the description down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.